boys and girls, it's Mrs. Johnson again, and I'm just really looking forward to drawing butterflies with you today. Um, I hope you guys are starting the school year right and enjoying it. Uh, I know it's a big change, and uh, kind of disappointing that you're not back in school to see your friends. There's one advantage, we're all going to really love school after this, <laughs> and really appreciate it. Okay, so I really recommend that you just get a school pencil. You know, that'd be great for this drawing. Later on, you'll probably want some Sharpies in different widths. And you might want to do some watercolor. That's up to you. But today, I'm just going to show you the drawing part, and then you can decide if you want to add to it. So here's a pretty cool butterfly. The hard thing about drawing butterflies is keeping them symmetrical, keeping the right side the same as the left side, and vice versa. So I'm going to give you a few little tricks on that. Also, just having fun with it and stylizing it the way you want. Now, if you want to go for a realistic butterfly, all you have to do is look at one as you draw it and try to copy the shape of the wings and the patterns inside the wings. Otherwise, you can just have some fun with it. One thing I want to point out to you is the difference between curved lines in the wings versus straight lines with corners. You can see over here, right in this little spot is straight lines and this is more curved. This is more realistic. I will talk about how to do that, but this is fine. You can tell that they aren't curved in these corners where these are more curved in the corners. This side is more realistic. This is less realistic. And I started thickening up some of the lines here and then I decided I'll just wait on that and show you that, okay? So here's another drawing that I did real quick. You can see how every time I make these, I make these different. Sometimes I give them silly faces, sometimes more serious. You don't really even have to add a face. Different textures, different shapes. And you can see again where I've started using a Sharpie to fill in those negative spaces, which is the spaces around the ones you want to color, which you could do, by the way, with colored pencil, with chalk. I think chalk is really cool in this lesson if you want to use it. Okay. And here's another one that I started, just playing with some shapes and lines. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start fresh without any drawing previously. Get your pencil and your eraser ready. And the first thing I want to just, just an added hint. If you're having a hard time drawing circles, they're hard. And they don't have to be perfect on your butterfly's head, but if it bothers you, use what you have to make a circle. Like trace a dime, trace a quarter, trace a nickel, okay? So I'm, I'm going to put my head over in this corner so that I can add my butterfly wings. Don't worry if part of your wing falls off the paper either. That doesn't look bad. It only looks weird when your heads fall off the paper. Okay, so here's my circle head. And I'm just using a darker pencil so that you might be able to see this easier. But you can just use a school pencil. I also recommend that you draw really, really lightly so you can change it if you don't like it. Then think of his body kind of going in a straight line, even if you curve it. So I'm just kind of showing you how I'm thinking I'm going to put him in diagonally. The thorax could be either a rectangle or a rounded oval piece or a half of an oval like I did. Doesn't really matter. I just put in a thorax. And then for the abdomen, you could have it very straight, just like a V, which is probably how you usually draw it. But I tend to make things a little more stylized and kind of have fun with the curved lines. This does make your butterfly look more feminine. And if you don't like that, then that's probably not a good step. Now that we have our three basic body parts, the next is the wings. The hardest part is the symmetry, like I said. Wings always come out of the middle body part. If you're wondering why your butterflies aren't looking so good, a lot of times it's because you tend to People do, and I've seen a lot of kids do this. You tend to draw them coming out of the abdomen. If you just change that bottom line to coming out of the thorax, they're going to look better. I'll show you that today. So we're going to just curve upward, and you could cut really angle up or straight out. It really wouldn't matter, but you should put a little bit of a curve in it, regardless of which direction you go. Then when you like your first curve, check its length. So what I do is I take my pencil and I kind of check it like this. I can just kind of pinch it to see how long it is. Then I bring it over here and I check it. And if I'm close, I just leave it alone. If I'm pretty far off, I'm going to try to change it. Then right in the middle, I now need to make a line going downward. I can make it curve and I could make it straight, whatever you want. 
So I'm going to kind of go kind of like a flat S. I'm going to go in and then out. So I need to do that over here. In and then out. Then I need to do that whole check again. How am I doing on length? It's not as important that the shape look exactly the same or the distance from here to here and here to here is the same, but you could check that if you wanted, if you were really going for perfect symmetry. But this line right here, if they're close, it's going to look good. Okay, now I'm going to just add myself a nice curve on this side and a nice curve on this side. If you notice, I kind of go back and forth, back and forth, trying to keep that symmetry going. Curve in here curve in here. Now I think I'm going to go off the page a little bit on this one. So I'll just go off and then back in. And then I'm just going to curve it inward now. Curve inward and curve inward. Now look at your two wings and say, do they look like they belong to the same butterfly? Not that they look like mine, but they look like each other. I'm good. I'm good to go there. So for your lower wings, they do come out from underneath the upper wings, and they also come out of this space. So it's actually easier if you put on the bottom line first. So I'm going to just start down here coming out of my thorax and coming out of my thorax. And like I said before, these could be a little bit different. Now looking at this, this space is a little bit different than this one, but you also notice I have a turn in the body, so I might get that. So now I look, wow, that's a lot different than that. If that's going to buck you, there's no reason this line can't go under the body and attach here. So you just can't see it. It's hidden. So if I wanted to, I could just go in like this, and this is the only part that's going to show. The rest of it is under his abdomen, which isn't a problem. That makes this space a little closer to that one. I could even move it over more, or I could go in and move this one over more if I wanted. Okay, and I think I will do that just to make those spaces a little closer to the same. Then I'm going to check my length. How am I doing on length? Am I close? Eh, this one's a little bit longer. I think I'll fix it. Okay, now I've got my bottom line in. I'm pretty happy with it. This space and this space are different, but not too much that it bothers me. Next, I need to have a, a space. How's this going to end? Well, I could go longer. I can go shorter. I could curve in. I can have some fun with it. I think what I'll do is just put a little loop here like this. You see these very um, common on butterfly wings. There we go. Now I'm going to look at those. Am I happy with the way they look? Now remember that these fit underneath these, so they could attach right here and then come out over here. So all you have to do is draw the part that comes out. So I'm going to go ahead and just curve this behind and curve this behind. And then I'm going to look at them and say, am I happy with them? If I am, I'm done with my wings. My basic shapes are done, and now I can have fun. The next thing I wanted to do is a profile butterfly. Now they're way easier. If you're really struggling with the symmetry on this, just do profile ones. That means you're looking at them from the side. The reason they're easy is because you only have to draw two full wings. So I'm going to go ahead and put one in here. Now you notice I didn't leave myself a lot of room, so I can either make it really small or I can let them overlap. And I'm going to go for overlapping. So here's my head, similar in size. Here's my thorax similar in size. And I'm just going to make the abdomen just curve a little bit backwards, kind of like he's on his side a little bit more. So similar, but not the same. You can just see they're just a little bit different. Not a problem. Okay, so when I put this wing in, it's going to actually go behind this one. So I'm going to go up, pretend it's running through it, and come out again. Now because I don't have to worry about this symmetry thing, I can just have fun designing this wing. I'm going to make this one just slightly different. Then I'm going to come out here and I'm actually going to make this one a little bit longer. You can see this is similar but different. You could make any shape you want. An oval's fine. Then I am going to just do something way different down here. So I'm going to come down here. They don't have to be the same butterfly, right? This is your design. Okay, and then I'm going to come in here very small and I'm going to make kind of an interesting pattern going around the edges of the wings, like that. Oh, I'm kind of liking that one. 
So I'll just leave it like that. I've got my basic wing shapes. Now, if you want to show a little bit of this wing behind, that's totally capable. You just make another curve here like this and show it hiding behind. You don't have to show the whole thing. If this one is light orange, then this one would be darker orange. So you would just make it a little bit different. If you felt like you could see a little bit here, you could put it in, but it's really not necessary. I think I'll just put in just a little tip of it like that. Okay, so faces. Have some fun with it. Draw them any way you want. Make them silly. There's a cute little idea. There's one with little hearts at the end. This one has little circles. Let's show you those, these eyes. These eyes are big black pupils with eyelashes. Look at that interesting mouth of the little nose. And look at Mr. Grumpy over here <laughs> with his bent antennas. Okay, so what you kind of decide what you want. If you feel confident, you could just do it in a Sharpie right off, but it, I do recommend these extra fine or ultra fine Sharpies. If you don't feel confident, draw it in pencil first. So I really like big eyes, so I'm just gonna definitely give it some big eyes. And, you know, draw your own. If you have some cool way you like to make things look, do it. Now, I want you to see the difference between these two eyes. I could put a little sparkle by leaving just a teeny tiny white dot up in the corner, or a much bigger dot. Um, I also could make just kind of like a little wedge space up in the corner, that's up to me. I'm actually gonna make this one look a little bit like these are eyelids and put a little eyelashes kind of coming out the side. Ah, I kind of like that one. Now, you could just have a simple mouth or you can get a little more advanced in it. You could even give it an expression like, oh no. <laughs> And your eyebrows don't have to fit down here, you guys. They can even go up here in animation. They can go wherever you want them. Now, antennas. Crooked, straight, curved, whatever you want. I tend to like them better if they curve the same direction. I've just noticed over the years that I just think they look nicer, but up to you. And then what you do at the end of these is up to you. I'm just going to put some little circles here like that. So there's my face. You could add any kind of pattern in here. I'm just going to add a little polka dotted pattern using some half circles on the edges to make the po polka dots look like they're going around the sides, which I think looks kind of cool. So there's my thorax. And then for your abdomen, you could just leave it plain, but um, dragonflies' abdomens have stripes on them. So if you wanted to kind of put that into your butterfly, that would work too. Um, I'm thinking I might go with some different kind of patterns. So I'm going to kind of do a little zigzag, skip a space. It's kind of fun too because this could help me break up the colors. Okay, and I'm, just because I don't want to leave this guy out, I'm going to go ahead and give him kind of a sad face. <laughs> Maybe a little grumpy too, with a little downturned eyebrow. Okay, now let's talk about how to design the center of the wings. <coughs> Remember that they kind of resemble leaf shapes that have these little veins running through them. Capturing a little bit of that leaf shape actually will make it look more like a butterfly if you put a little bit of that leaf kind of veining branch work in them. You can see that in this one too. Although these shapes aren't really in butterfly wings, by adding these little um, branch shapes, it helps it look more realistic and still stylized. Okay, so here's the deal. When you're designing your wings, think symmetry, symmetry, symmetry. But don't make these two really cool wings on this side just the way you want it, and then try to do that. Go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you will have a better look. So if I make a straight line like this, then I want to make a straight line on this one. And I want to just kind of look at the lines as I'm doing them and make sure that I like the way they look. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put a circle up in this corner with the circle inside. And over here, I'm going to put a circle in this corner with a circle inside, always looking similar in symmetry. Then I'm going to go ahead and make big circle 
with two more getting smaller on each side and a big circle with two more getting small. Now most butterflies, especially monarch butterflies, they have little spots all along the edges of their wings. So I always like to put in at least a few little spots because I think it looks more like a butterfly. Not that I put them in the same place. Okay, you remember how it's, I said it kind of is like branches? So I'm going to go ahead and split this space here. And you'll notice that I'm not perfect in my symmetry. It's just pretty close. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and split this distance and come down to this space. So I'm going to do this again. And I'm going to do this again. Then I'm going to look, am I close, am I close, angle out, angle out, like branches splitting, angle out, angle out. Hmm, kind of liking these so far, I've got this big space in here. I think what I'll do is I'll split it, so I'll just kind of go one and two, I'm going to split this side, one and two and over here I think I'll do something similar I'll just give it a nice little curve here and a nice little curve here and as you can see I'm just kind of filling in the negative spaces till I'm happy with the shape now here's the hard part try to stop before you think it's perfect and I'll tell you why the more creative you are as an artist the more you will tend to over create. What that means is like, well, if it's got that one, maybe I should add another one and another one and another one. And then pretty soon you've made a mess of your picture because you've just added too much. So I always say, hey, when you sort of like it, you're pretty sure you're happy with it. Stop, 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 stop. You can always come back and add more. It's harder to take designs away than to put more in. Even when you go to color it or watercolor it or chalk it, you could always add more designs. So like when I come in and I say, well, I really wish I had another shape in there, I'll put one in. But right now I want to stay not too busy until I've decided that. Okay, that's my word of caution for you. Here I'm just going to start with a nice big oval shape. And so this goes up into here. Okay, now i got to figure it out from here. Now, because I'm using a marker, I can't erase, so hopefully I don't make a mistake that I'm not happy with. And if I do, I'm stuck with it. Okay? It's just the way it is. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and instead of making a circle here, I'm just going to make a tear. I kind of like that shape. I think that's pretty. And remember I told you I really like spots, so I just count them. One, two, three, four, five. And then I try to repeat it. One, two, three, four, five. And then if I start on the inside line, one, two, three, and then one, two, three. So I think you get the hang of the whole symmetry thing. You would be doing it on this one too. So if you look at this profile one, you can see these little interesting shapes, hearts, and some more dots. This is the one behind. And I did want to show you this one. See how I started adding these little spirals and patterns in my shape? And what I did here, which is a little different, is I actually made a teardrop shape here with my pencil. And then I went within my ink and divided the spaces up a little differently. A lot different, actually. So if you come in and you draw yourself a shape that you want to use, and I'm not drawing this super hard, so hopefully you can see it, but I've got myself a nice shape. When I go to ink it, you're gonna see this. So when I went to ink it, I actually divided this up into little spaces, but they actually line up with each other evenly because I had that pencil line to follow along. And you can see that there, that this line flows with that line, which is kind of fun. Okay, so have some fun with your designs, kind of design how you want to go, and then decide how much black ink do you want to put in it. The more black ink you have, the less you have room for watercolor. And so trying to balance that out is super important.
If you look at this butterfly, seeing all the black that's right here, I think it looks really cool. This is super fine lined. I would probably go back in here and get rid of these little corners. And I want you to see the difference here. I just kind of curve it around like that. And then I come over here and I curve this one around. Now, some of you might be wondering, when should I do all this little detail work? Honestly, I usually do it after I watercolor it. Because after I watercolor it, then I know, do I want more black in it? Maybe I got it really, really busy. And I'd like to just paint over some of the painting that I did that I'm not that happy with. There's a lot of butterflies that have a lot of black in them. And so maybe I want to cover it up. You can see right here these curved lines look more realistic than the straight ones. And I'm going to get rid of that one right there. I'm going to just make a curve here, get rid of that one there. I think my butterfly is already starting to look more like I want it to on the right side. It also looks more realistic, even though I've stylized it with patterns the way I want, like I was the person who designed the butterfly. So looking at a bunch of different butterflies and noticing their patterns and trying to copy them, there's no problem with that. That's an awesome thing to do. And that would be more realistic. But I wasn't going for realistic. And sometimes I just want to do it the way I want to do it. And I want to play with it. And if you're always trying to copy everything to look exactly like nature, I always tell people, just take a photo. If you really want to be creative and create something new, try to stretch yourself. He might make something you're really amazed by. And you might not like it. That's okay. Just keep changing it until you do. I've, I'll tell you right now, you will never be a great artist if you don't take risks. If, if you like everything you do all the time, you're not taking any risks because you're just copying other people's stuff. you got to take some risks. you got to make some really ugly paintings and go, oh my gosh, that was crazy. That was not a good step. You learn from your mistakes in art just like you learn from your mistakes in everything we do. And it's good to make them and it's good to let them go. So I'm really liking more black.